Thank you very much, Jenny, and uh, and hi to everybody. So um, uh, sorry to disappoint you. I'm speaking on behalf of Danage, an interest group in Denmark, uh, uh, promoting, supporting a strong, long life for older people, uh, as I am perhaps myself, 75 on the inside. I'm not yet uh, 60, uh, and the people I'll be speaking about today. But uh, as, as has been said today already by many people, uh, the adult uh, age group, target group is, of course, interesting in this field. Um, just the past month, we saw it uh, attacking the capital on the streets just by looking at the photos. Everyone was plus 25, I guess, uh, at least plus 20. And also we've seen protests uh, against the, the vaccine, the COVID protest, where you often see different kinds of movements with a lot of people from 30 plus and, and above also stick 60 year olds. So how do we uh, bring the older people into this conversation and engage them in the digital literacy? Well, here in uh, Copenhagen, where I'm based in the Nordics, uh, uh, the main challenge is, and just going directly from Annalise's presentation that you reach children and young people through the uh, traditional educational schools and systems programs, but there is no conceptual place or institution to reach older people. And furthermore, obviously older people are used to media gatekeepers here so people who are uh, above 50, they trust what they read online, uh, unlike their grandkids or great-grandchildren. Uh, they, uh, they are not digital natives or like you, uh, Jenny, maybe. Um, so, um, so today I'm, I'm representing some of the uh, initial scoping and initiative we have been developing with, with Dan H. Uh, so Dan H uh, is uh, an, an organization, as I said, working in Denmark. It's a quite big organization. They're, they have 900,000 members and in Denmark they have, there's 5.8 million people living. So Dan H represents 59% of the Danish population over 60. Five. So they have a big reach in terms of the audience group, uh, target group. They also have 215 chapters of local uh, volunteers, 20,000 volunteers work in their local uh, groups to, to do voluntary social work, membership activities, advocacy, et cetera. So uh, the, the framework of action is there and kind of the, the, uh, the, the credible messenger to the older people. I guess we, that's kind of why we, we teamed up. Furthermore, they, we have also looked at data saying that people over 65, uh, are more vulnerable to, to misinformation and also, un unfortunately, willingly or inadvertently, uh, they share more of this information that they don't uh, know is fake <laughs> because they don't understand the new media reality. Uh, further, in terms of the tone in the debate, just facts from Denmark before I go directly to, to, the, to the scene here, 59% of Danes in a, in a recent survey, they refrain from the debate on Facebook because of the tone. So there's also a work around who is having the kind of the major tone online and here it's dominated by older people and men. Same study said that. I guess it's perhaps the same in many places, I, I don't know. So how are uh, Danates addressing this? Uh, first of all, two principles they have set by working with the older uh, age group. One is that they do not want to embarrass older people in this kind of education and attempt to improve the digital literacy. They wanna inform and embrace. So that's the, the, the way to approach the, the education to this group. And secondly, they wanna cooperate with others. So Danates is not doing the teaching themselves, they are experts in uh, the older people's mindset, but not in the conversation around, of course, the digital scene, what everyone here at the webinar knows everything about in terms of mis misinformation and what we're speaking around. Um, so they are, they are reaching out and collaborating with a lot of institutions that uh, older people respect, cultural institutions, museums, etc. Uh, and also, of course, people who, who are writing the trading material, uh, who, who, who know uh, some of the expertise uh, in the field. Do not want to reinvent the wheel. There's a lot of uh, existing initiatives out there. Um, I have to say one thing here is that there's not a lot of no knowledge on the, uh, the skills of the older people uh, in Denmark, at least. So they are also commissioning research to, in order to build the, the programming even more kind of correct on, on the outcomes and the mentality. What I can share with you now, just by, by concluding here, is four kind of directions as initi of initiatives. Unfortunately, I don't have a lot of results because the program is a little bit stalled due to COVID. And this is older people who are not familiar with a lot of online training in the field. So a lot of these things have not been initiated yet. But um, the first uh, thing is to do direct training. So uh, Dan H is already uh, training uh, volunteers in IT. So 2000 people are training across 250 places in Denmark in IT. So how do you connect with your grandkids if you're 65 on Zoom or Skype? And how do you use your phone? So they integrate the digital literacy training in this. Uh, obviously, um, merging, if, if you go back to the point of trying to make it an everyday event, 
uh, they are merging both the training in a session where the, the older people usually go every Tuesday and Thursday to the local chapter. They have their coffee, they talk about the football club, and then they also perhaps talk about the election and then they get the training. But also in terms of, of bringing the tools and applying them into everyday, the everyday conversation, how do you do that in the everyday life when they read the news online on their new iPad, if they have such, such one? How do you work on fake news there? If you talk over the phone or if you're on Facebook with your grandkid, how do you figure out that what you're watching is not uh, misinformation? So that is the conversation around that. The other thing is to, um, to empower all the 800 or almost 900,000 members uh, today. So they have a, a big reach in terms of a magazine, a social media platform where they will take the discussion up in a conversation that older people understand what is misinformation? Why can't you trust everything you read? Thirdly, uh, they are operating also in the field that I think we've also touched upon today, uh, the hateful, the dangerous speech, the uh, still legal speech uh, in terms of trying to operate and improve the, the tone among all these older people who spread the uh, hate and act completely uh, crazy online, uh, which, where they would not do it uh, down in the store. So they are doing that also across generations with, with the interest groups who work with young people to try to make more kind of a national conversation around the good tone. And fourthly, I think I talked about the, the, the research, so they would like to commission more research on the habits on how to tailor make these programs. So this is a little bit about the, the framing of it. Uh, and I think it, it matches very much with, with your concept of digital citizenship, Jenny, and uh, your material is excellent. Also in terms of framing these programs um, um, forward.